Hello students, today we will study the first chapter of history that is from the beginning of time. Does the time has a beginning? Does it have an end? Have you ever thought of the beginning of time? Now let us study about the beginning of human life on the earth. In this module we will study the sources to understand early human history. The story of human evolution. How was Neanderthal man's skull discovered? The positive feedback mechanism and theories of human origin. The replacement theory. This chapter traces the beginning of human existence. We go back into history to find out the origin of human existence. It has been believed that the first human-like creatures appeared on Earth's surface around 5.6 million years ago. Many former humans emerged, then became extinct due to the course of time. In this way, evolutionary development of humans took place on Earth. Humans resembling the modern humans originated around 1,6000 years ago. Till 8000 BCE, humans hunted wild animals, collected eatable vegetation and caught fish to obtain food. Now let us study the early human history and the sources to study them. The fossils are the best things to study the human history. Human fossils, stone tools and cave paintings help us to understand early human history. Each of these discoveries has a history of its own. Fossils are the remains or the impressions of very old plants and animals which have turned into stone. These are often embedded in rock and are thus preserved for millions of years. Stone tools made and used by early humans are found in various parts of Africa and Europe. Stone tools such as pebbles, sharp stones, stone blades, etc. were used for various purposes in early human life. Paintings found on the walls of the caves in Europe and Africa are helping us to understand early human history. Most scholars refuse to accept that these objects were the remains of early humans. So they did not believe that the ability of early humans to make stone rules or paint. Because according to Old Testament of the Bible, human origin was an act of creation by God. It's only after a few years that true significance of these finds was realized. Now let us study the story of human evolution. We will study about the precursors of modern human beings. Between 36 million years and 24 million years, primates, a category of mammals, emerged in Asia and Africa and they were considered as the foreigners of the modern human beings. Primates are a subgroup of a larger group of mammals. They include monkeys, apes and humans. They have body hair, a relatively long gestation period following birth, mammary glands, different types of teeth and the ability to maintain a constant body temperature. How was Neanderthal man's skull discovered? In August 1856, Workmen who were quarrying for limestone in the Neander Valley, a gorge near the German city of Dusseldorf, found a skull and some skeletal fragments. These were then handed over to Karl Furlet, a local schoolmaster and natural historian, who realized that they did not belong to a modern human. He then made a plaster cast of the skull and sent it to Hermann Kaufhausen a professor of anatomy at Bonn University. The following year, they jointly published a paper claiming that this skull represented a form of human 
that was extinct. At that time, scholars did not accept this view and instead declared that the skull belonged to a person of more recent times. But later, they accepted it and named us Neanderthal men. Between 24 million years ago and 5.6 million years ago, there emerged a subgroup amongst primates called hominoids. Hominoids are different from monkeys in a number of ways. They have a larger body and do not have a tail. Besides, there is a longer period of infant development and dependency amongst hominoids. Between 5.6 million years and 1.8 million years ago, hominids have evolved from hominoids and share certain common features and have major differences as well. Differences between hominoids and hominids Hominids have a little bigger brain. Hominoids are quadrupeds walking on all four legs, while hominids have an upright posture and viperal locomotion, that is walking on two feet. The hominoids have flexible forelimbs and marked differences in the hand. While hominids have flexibility in hand, leg and fingers which help them to make tools and weapons. Hominids are further subdivided into two branches known as Australopithecus and Homo. Each of these in turn includes several species. The major differences between Australopithecus and Homo relate to brain size, jaws and teeth. The Australopithecus have smaller brain size, heavier jaws and larger teeth than the Homo. The name Australopithecus comes from a Latin word Austral meaning southern and a Greek word Pythagoras meaning ape. So Australopithecus means southern ape. Homo is a Latin word meaning men although there were women as well. Scientists distinguish among several types of Homo. The names assigned to these species are derived from what are regarded as the typical characteristics. So the fossils are classified as Homo habilis, Homo erectus and Homo sapiens. Flexibility in hands and fingers enabled hands to be freed for carrying infants or objects. In turn, as hands were used, more and more running became easy. Growth in the size of the brain helped for thinking, memorizing, planning and realizing to make new attempts for further developments. Visual surveillance improved in early humans and it favored for long distance walking, search for food, find animals and many more works. The positive feedback mechanism. Some of the features or developments in the anatomy of early human beings favored or shaped them to become modern humans. These developments are together called as positive feedback mechanism. Viperalism or upright walking helped to use less energy for hunting, carrying infants, making and using weapons. Now let us study 
the theories of human origin. First, we'll study the replacement theory. The issue of the place of origin of modern humans have been much debated by the scholars. Two totally divergent views have been expounded. They are advocating the regional continuity model with multiple regions of origin and the other with a replacement model with a single origin in Africa. According to the regional continuity model, the Homo sapiens originated in different regions or continents and gradually evolved at different rates into modern humans. The theory is based on the regional differences in the features of present-day humans such as color of skin, height, color of hair, etc. So we come to the end of this module. Thank you.